How do you respond when you're challenged to do something that will stretch you? I would like to say that I always embrace the challenge, but not always true. For me, emotional challenges are really much less stressful than physical challenges. And so I'm grateful that the challenge that I was given is an emotional challenge. I was challenged to go live or do a post and talk about why I do what I do. You know, I love the opportunity to share that. I describe myself as a success catalyst that helps you find the answers that are within you so you can have more of what you want in life and less of what you don't. And how I got there and why that matters to me means that I've got to share some ancient history with you. Some of you have heard this, many of you have not. I was 12 years old and I was standing on a subway platform in New York City. I was listening to the approaching subway with the clank of the wheels against the track and the light reflecting off of the subway tiles. And I was trying to decide if I was gonna jump. I was in so much pain because my father had been abusing me sexually that I just was desperate to find a way to end the pain. Well, the fact that I'm here talking to you today tells you that I did not make the decision to jump. And for that, I'm grateful. Fast forward several years, and I received a life-altering epiphany that said, you're not responsible for your father's choices, but you are responsible for how you allow them to impact your life. At the time that I was being abused, the sexual abuse of children was not on the public radar. Nobody talked about it, nobody wrote about it. There were no resources, it was unacknowledged. And so if you were in this situation, the feeling was that you were the only one and there must be something wrong with you. And so I began to look again for resources, but they still weren't there. But that epiphany had been so powerful that I knew I had to do whatever I needed to do so that I did not continue to suffer as a result of my father's choices. And so I jumped into the personal development and the self-help arena to look to see what I could find there. And I would find a puzzle piece and I would pick it up and I would look at it and I would say, hmm, I wonder if this will work and I would try it. And if it did, I would keep it. If it didn't, I would toss it and go look for another puzzle piece. Well, gradually I, connect, I collected a, a number of different puzzle pieces, but they didn't fit together. You know, it was like that puzzle that spread out on your dining room table and you're looking at all of those pieces of cloud or, or whatever that all look the same and you can't figure out where anything goes and there's these big gaping holes. That's kind of how I felt. And what I did was I began to build bridges between the pieces that I had. And in the process, I made a lot of progress towards hope and healing. Fast forward a few more years, and I had a, a business, and I was a single mom, and I had a lot of stress in my life. And I was asked to speak about how I dealt with stress. And so I thought, oh goody. And so as I prepared my remarks, I realized what I needed to say. And it started out by saying, hey, we all have the normal stresses in our life. There's the guy that flips you off on the freeway, the mouthy teenager, the boss that's nitpicking a project you're working on. But we also have uncommon stresses in our life. We have the stress of delinquent kids. We have the stress of divorce. We have the stress of the legacy of sexual abuse as children. 
and I named a half a dozen different things. And I said, I've experienced all of these. And then went on to talk about strategies that worked for me for dealing with stress. Afterwards, I had four women come up to me. Three of them simply put their arms around me and put their head on my shoulder and cried into my ear. I thought I was the only one. The fourth one put her arms around me and cried on my shoulder. And she sobbed and she sobbed and she sobbed and she sobbed. And she just simply couldn't say anything. But I knew and she knew. That was the day that I knew that even though my healing was not complete, I had a responsibility and an opportunity to reach back and to help those who did not yet understand that there was a path to hope and healing. And they were just living with the incredible pain of somebody else's choices. I did that just simply on a pro bono basis for several years, raising my kids and running my business. And the time came about 15 years ago when for a variety of reasons, it was time to shut down the brick and mortar business. And I stepped back and I said, okay, you're ready for your third act. What's it gonna be? And I knew that I had the capacity to help others create a better life. That truly was what I was passionate about. And so I prepared myself in a variety of ways. I took some coaching certification programs and I created the seven pillars of a happy and successful life. I created my unique definition of success and began to understand how it was the foundation for so many things I had done and was continuing to do and could do in the future. But everything was driven by why. My why was simple. I knew that we had the power to change, that if we changed our choices today, we would change our tomorrows. And that was the message that I wanted to share. I knew that there was a path to hope and healing. You know, we all experience trauma in life. We all experience things that were not on our bucket list, things that where life didn't follow the script. And we have a choice. We can embrace those things, we can learn from them, we can grow from them, but we don't need to allow them to define us. Or we can clutch them to our chests and do what so often society encourages us to do for some crazy stupid reason and live in victimhood. Now, why on earth would somebody want to live in victimhood when freedom's available? Freedom from all of the ugliness, from all of the pain, from all of the hurt. Freedom to embrace the life that they want, the life on their terms to experience hope and to experience healing and to see transformation happen. That brings me such incredible joy because I know how that process changed my life. And when I can be a catalyst to help it change somebody else's life, that just, as far as I'm concerned, is about the greatest high that there is. And so, yeah, I was challenged. I was challenged to share with you my why. It's been years since I was shy about sharing some of these things. I understand that the ability that I have to help other people is in so many ways based on their understanding that I've been there, that I understand the pain that they're experiencing, and that when I promise them that there is a path to hope and healing, they can trust me because it's a path I've walked. Our paths may not be identical. We're different people. They're not going to be identical. Our circumstances are not identical. 
But what is the same is the fact that we can change, that we can embrace the opportunity to become who we choose to be, not who somebody else tried to define us as being. So that's my why. I'd love to have you join me on my journey. It's a fabulous adventure. Talk to you again soon.